Get Healthy Cincinnati from the Christ Hospital and these local partners. Uh, my name is Edward Lim. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the Christ Hospital. If you're trying to look at the difference between a sore joint and a joint that can be developing arthritis, I think the best way to answer that is a sore joint can be an arthritic joint, but an arthritic joint doesn't always have to be a sore joint. An arthritic joint usually is a manifestation of some disease in that joint for which you will find other symptoms of swelling, limited range of motion, warmth, and symptoms that last more than the usual period that a sore joint would do from overuse. How does a joint work? And I think a joint works by having function, stability, strength, and endurance, and should be relatively pain-free. And every joint is different. Your knee needs stability for you to plant and cut. Your hip needs stability so that when you squat, you can get up from a chair without it popping out. Your shoulder needs a lot of mobility so that you can cock your arm back and throw a fast pitch ball. So every joint is different, but the basic requirements for you to have a good functional joint would be the presence of good stability, the good presence of strength, and the mobility that comes with most joints for you to be able to carry out that specific function. Uh, when somebody has joint pain, I think the most important thing to remember is what caused your joint pain. If, is it from overuse? Is it from overexertion? Is it from inappropriate use? And most of these from overuse get better with time. Uh, the best way to think about how to rest anything or any joint, whether it's a muscle, tendon, joint, ligament, is rest, ice, some degree of compression or to, to prevent swelling, and to some degree elevation if it's your foot or your hand. When you are looking for exercises that are appropriate for your joints, I think it's important to think about what joints you are dealing with. If you have a weight-bearing joint for which repetitive impact is not good for it, then what you would do is substitute a different activity. For example, if you are a runner but you can't run, maybe you can exercise bike or stationary bike. Maybe you can do free weights. Maybe you can swim. Maybe you can do other things that are movement exercises rather than impact loading exercises. So I think that there is always potential for you to do alternative exercise activities for a joint that has either been damaged or injured. It does not mean that you cannot exercise just because you have an abnormal joint. What is the difference between a joint that you repair, a joint that you resurface, and a joint that you replace? A repair would be if you tore your ligament and we had to repair your ligament with another ligament but not you know, replace your joint, that would be a joint repair. Or if you had a cartilage tear that we had to trim part of the cartilage or repair it. Or if you had loose body that we had to take out, those would fall under the category of joint repair or reconstruction. Um, a lot of the sports medicine surgeries are joint repair to reconstruction type procedures. Now the second part of it, which is the, what is the difference between resurfacing and replacement? Well, resurfacing is a kind of replacement in a way, but the advantage of, of resurfacing is that you take out less bone. Well, the equivalent would be instead of replacing your tooth, you would cap your tooth rather than take out your tooth and use another a dowel or any other kind of implant. Uh, again, there are some situations where resurfacing makes sense, and there are other situations where replacement makes more sense. And so you have to ask your doctor what you feel is the appropriate thing for you. Which candidates would be appropriate for joint repair? Uh, the younger person who is intending to keep their joint should be one that you do not want to replace right away. So the younger active person that may have minor derangements of their knee are the ones that would benefit from repair of the joint. In that category would fall procedures such as arthroscopic surgery, ligament replacement surgery, and the like. And that would fall under the repair category. Uh, for joint resurfacing and joint replacement, historically, uh, some physicians have used resurfacing as the tool of choice and others have used replacement. And again, there are advantages and disadvantages to each. In the past, the concept of resurfacing was a very good concept for a younger, more active person that wanted a more bone-preserving operative procedure. Uh, more recently, however, and some of you may have watched a lot of television and noticed that uh, the metal and metal resurfacings have come into problem from FDA and other legal issues because of unexpected consequences of it. 
So I think that you will see historically resurfacing not being as popular as replacement has been. But in the past, they have been used for both reasons uh, in the weight-bearing joints of your hip. In the knee, we don't hear about resurfacings because replacements do very well in the knee. Well, the, the question is, how, how long do joint replacements last and what are they made of? Uh, generally, most implants, which are replacement implants, are made of a forged metal, cobalt chrome, uh, in some situations, titanium alloys. Now remember that the joint components has the component that gets connected to the bone and the, and the component that articulates with itself or the joint itself, so to speak. So on the second part of the question would be, what kind of joint surface material do you use? Uh, most joint replacement material are used with uh, cross-link polyethylene. Cross-link polyethylene is a hard plastic that has a very low coefficient of friction and it basically simulates cartilage because it has very low friction. And so cross-link polyethylene on the side of the socket would be the material of choice. And on the other side would be a hardened metal like cobalt chrome. Uh, there are implants that are used of ceramic and ceramic advantage being that they have much lower wear rates. You have heard recently on a uh, lot in the news about metal on metal prosthesis, which are the surfaces that are used, but largely that has kind of fallen a little bit by the wayside because of unexpected consequences of metallic wear and the consequences thereof. So when you make decisions for choice of an implant or choice of a prosthesis, I always tell my patients, you can go into a doctor's office and ask for implant A or implant B, but ultimately I think you should trust your doctor in trying to have him make the right decision on the choice of implant and materials for you because he would be the most knowledgeable for his use in his hands. Most joint replacements in terms of longevity can be expected to last 15 or 20 years. Now there are different things that cause implants to fail. Uh, obviously if you have a complication like an infection or if you have an alignment problem that causes uneven wear of a prosthesis, it may not last as long. But a well-placed uh, prosthesis done in a person that has reasonable expectations for their prosthesis should be expected to last 15 to 20 years. And I think that would be for a person, I always tell my patients that you try to do age appropriate activity. You do not get a joint replacement at the age of 65 and expect to play uh, competitive football, for example, that would not be expected to let your joints last. When a patient comes to you with a joint problem, how do you help the patient decide what's best for them? And I think the best way to answer that is this. Remember for orthopedics, the problems that you have in your joints are not life or death situations. They are to some degree quality of life decisions. You can't run, do you want to run? You, you hurt, but do you hurt that much? So these are all decisions that a patient has to be part of the, of the treatment decision. The decision to do something is not the doctor's decision. The decision to, to do something is a patient's decision based on information given to him by the doctor of his or her current situation. Uh, i give you an example is, I can have a very bad knee on my x-ray, but I can walk for two hours uh, at Kenwood Mall, and your knee may be the worst looking x-ray that I ever saw, but if you're functioning well, there would be no reason for me to tell you to have anything done, because it has not affected the quality of your life. So most patient decisions are made by themselves or by their family members because they feel that this has affected them. And so orthopedic surgery, unlike heart surgery, are quality of life decisions that you make for your knee. You have an expected benefit, you have a known risk, and then there are some things that you want to go to get to that benefit, and then you have to help make that decision with your doctor. What, do you, what kind of choices do you have if you make a decision not to have surgery and you have a bad joint? And I think the best way to think through the process is most of us as human beings learn to adapt. So number one probably has to be some type of activity modification. So there are certain things that you can do. If you cannot run, maybe you can bike. That would be a substitution activity that you can still do and still expect the same cardiovascular fitness response that you want to get. Uh, the other two things that you can do is you can consider taking low-level anti-inflammatory medications. You can join a low-impact gym. 
You can do some workouts on your own. Uh, so there are so many other things that you can do. Uh, third thing is sometimes the use of a supportive brace can be protective, but not all the time. But I think that uh, there are non-surgical options just because you have a bad joint does not mean you automatically should have an operation, especially if it is something that you think you can live with to some degree. Brought to you by the Christ Hospital, 5WLWT and The Inquirer.